looks like uh, not only your defense, but a lot of the defenses in the Big Ten are playing really good right now. Do you think there's a connective tissue there with guys coming back, or is it just starting to figure out some of these offenses? What do you feel like is the big trend? I don't know. I think probably everybody has their individual reasons for why they're playing good if they're playing good. Um, to be honest with you, I don't get to see a ton of Big Ten defenses because we've played so many non-conference games. Uh, as we get through the year, I'll get to see more people on film, um, you know, cross over with the opponents. Um, but I know the reasons I think we're, we're better. Um, I can't tell you why everybody else is better. Yeah, I mean, you're always talking about it. We're, we're part of a football team. We're part of a team in general. Um, we need to control what we can control first, and then it's our job if we're doing what we're doing, it's our job to spread the, spread the culture that's being created in that room. And so, you know, pointing the finger is not solving any issues. Helping, helping others is solving a lot of issues. And so I think those kids got to take it upon themselves to uh, you know, help spread what they're, what they're creating in that room and, and continue to get better on their end. Uh, but we got good guys on the defense, and they're not finger pointers. They're not complainers. They want to work. They want to get better. They want to do their job. They know they can control their attitude. They can control their effort, and they can control their preparation, and that's what they're going to do. Uh, I told the guys that, you know, sitting up there in the box watching it, um, you know, obviously it brought a lot of joy to me to watch those guys playing like they did. And it's the, the I don't look at the stats during the game because that screws up the way I call it. I call it like we're, we're, like our plan says. Um, so I didn't really know. I just saw the emotion. I saw the, you know, the violence and the speed, uh, and that that made me very happy. Uh, I haven't read. Coach Fitzgerald's comment, obviously, respect him a lot for all that he's done for a long time in this league. Uh, but like we told the guys, praise and blame is all the same. Can't read your own press clippings. Time to go back to work. Uh, you know, there's only a few guys in your life that won't lie to you, the guys in our room and probably your family. Everybody else will tell you what you want to hear, what they want you to hear. So I appreciate the comment, uh, but I'm just like them. I don't need to read my own press clippings either. Yeah, I think, you know, I think it started last year, uh, like we, we've talked about it before, you know, we went from whatever step in the ladder you want to say, whether it's, you know, okay to good or good to better than average or however you want to term it. But I think that they built confidence last year and they realized there was a lot of mistakes and those kids wanted to fix those mistakes. And our assistant coaches have done an unbelievable job working with each individual, breaking it down in the offseason, seeing what each individual kid's needs, um, what is his areas of strengths, what's his areas of weakness. And those kids have taken it upon themselves to prepare at a, um, another level this year. Uh, they're, they're, they're really doing a nice job. And there's, there's an hour rule for college football. I can only be with them so much. But those guys have taken it upon themselves to meet individually, watch film, and also meet as a unit and watch film. And I think that goes back to the leadership and um, just the confidence that they've built over the last two seasons. Eric, what have you seen from Garrett Nelson at outside linebacker from just the first five years of what he's, what he's doing in this year? Yeah, the, he's the same guy, right? Um, when he first got here, he played every play like his hair was on fire. Uh, didn't know what he was doing. Uh, you know, it was a little stiff coming out. Um, what I've seen with him is his knowledge of the game has increased dramatically. His technique has increased dramatically, and his overall movement skills have increased dramatically. Uh, when you got a guy like him as a freshman that plays as hard as he did and wants it as bad as he did, then it becomes we need to get him in the game and we'll live with some mistakes, 
and let's coach him up. And we know we can develop that kid into a really good football player. And I think Coach Dawson's held up his part of the bargain, and Garrett Nelson's held up his part of the bargain. And he's become, um, you know, for us right now, he's playing outstanding football. And I think he's got, just like everybody on our defense, we've got so much more to give. You know, we're, we're playing good right now. That's great. You know, who cares? Let's get better. And I think there's, there's room for every single one of those guys, all 11, the next 11, all 22. They've got a lot more to go. Garrett's got a lot more to go, but I'm really proud of how he's playing right now. I know there's no easy positions to play on the fence, but an outside linebacker with Garrett's playing, can you just run through how, what, what they're responsible for and just how difficult that position is? Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it's a lot of stuff. You know, he's playing, you know, say what you want in base or whatever. We got five D linemen in or three D linemen and two outside backers. And then in nickel, we've got four defensive linemen. So he's playing outside backer, he's playing defensive end. They've got to be able to play the run. They've got to be able to rush the passer. And then they've got to be able to drop out to the flat or match, match somebody in, in his own pressure. So there's a lot of stuff that goes into that position. And there's a lot of things that technique wise, you got to know. Um, there's a lot of looks you got to understand. And there's a lot of different uh, fits they got to understand in the run game. Then they got to go beat a, we all know in the Big Ten, the tackles are really good. There's no secret. They got to go beat a really good tackle on pass rush. So there's a lot of stuff going on with him and Caleb. Sorry for guard pass, but the last couple of games, the way that Scott sort of managed the game in terms of putting the defense on the field first, the offense had a chance to take the lead out of the third quarter. You really sort of controlled the flow of the game in the second half. I mean, I feel like you sort of found a recipe for that can be successful with this team, the way you're built, and the way you want to sort of manage your way through 60 minutes. Yeah, I think um, Coach Frost has done a great job managing the game the last few weeks. Um, and I think each game is its own individual game. You know, there's going to be times where, you know, you may want the offense to go out first or you may want to go fast or you may want to, you know, try to, you know, make this thing a shootout and try to pressure people and get turnovers. But each individual game plan has to be different. The last two, I think, have been really good. Uh, I'm very comfortable with going out first. I know our kids like it. Uh, they thrive on that, getting out there first and trying to make making sure we can get off the field on the first series. That's a huge series for us. And then giving us an opportunity to get the ball in the, fir uh, the first possession of the second half, I think it's always good for the offense after they've gotten a, a good rhythm and then they can go back out and make their adjustments and, 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 get, and get in the swing of things. So I'm happy with, with, with the, you know, obviously really happy with, with Coach's game plans and his game management the last couple of weeks. When, when an offense takes a little bit more time off the clock, how much does that help the defense? And conversely, when you guys get three and outs, how much does that just help you guys to keep fresh? Yeah, I think the way we practice and the way we rotate, I don't think it's so much about being fresh. I think it's more about, you know, when you can get off the field, when you're on the field forever, uh, shoot, there's a billion offensive plays and you get to see all of them. You know, when you can contain those plays a little bit and you only see, you know, their best stuff because they're trying to convert first downs, that, that makes life a little bit easier, you know, as, as, as far as not seeing a, a trillion different looks. Now, uh, Northwestern, their offense does a really good job. You know, Coach Bajakian does a great job of formationing and motion, so we're going to see a ton of stuff this week. Um, but I think... There, there's pluses and minuses to, to sitting on the bench for a while and, and getting your, like you said, you're obviously going to be more fresher, uh, but those guys are trained. And if you talk to them, they want to be on the football field whenever we can, whether it's our offense gets a seven minute drive and scores a touchdown, everybody's fired up. If it goes three and out, we're all fired up to go out there as well. So uh, obviously I like controlling the game a little bit. Every defensive coach in America will tell you that, but we're ready for anything. Well, like I said, I think they're extremely well versed in using formations, different personnel groupings, motions to try to, um, you know, get your eyes going the wrong way and making you move the defensive formation. Uh, also, I think they have, you know, they have an experienced offensive line, three returning starters. Uh, their running back hole is a really good football player, and I think their use of the tight ends is really good right now. Um, so it's a, it's a it's a lot of stuff to prepare for, and it's a it's a difficult offense. So I'm excited to play against it, and I know our kids are are excited for the challenge. Could you have used Casey on, on Saturday if you want to? Is he at a point now where he's he, he look he looked good? I thought. <laughs> yeah, um, Casey was available. Um, you know, I didn't feel like it was the right time. I didn't think he was 
quite where he needed to be. I, I, you know, sometimes it's a, it's a fine line of do you force a good player back in and it may be a detriment to him, or do you sit him on the shelf? If we needed him, he was up and ready to roll. Um, the guys were playing really well, and I thought Coach Tuioti had a great rotation going, so we didn't mess with that, and I'm looking forward to Casey getting back in and ready to roll.